we will take up one more problem in that direction. So, the problem is the speed of electron in the first Bohr orbit is given as c over 137, where c is the speed of light in the free space. The speed of electron in the second Bohr orbit will be what? So, again if we remember the correct formula for the speed of electron or the velocity you can say, we can definitely arrive at the answer. So, this problem can be solved directly by remembering the formula that is required, but instead of doing that, we will just spend little time and uh, recall the equation. See, we have this quantum condition m v r equal to n h upon 2 pi is the first equation. Then from this we need to find what speed that is a v. So, we can write v is equal to n h by 2 pi m into r. Now, r is the radius of the Bohr orbit and again you will be remembering that equation. So, if you substitute here, see 2 pi m into n square h square epsilon naught pi m z into a square. Now, all that I want to mention here, see this pi m gets cancelled and uh, 1 n definitely get cancelled and we will get from this equation that v is proportional to z by n. This is the equation that is required to solve this problem. But for the same value of z, you can add that v is proportional to 1 by n. So, once you know this, then we can take up this problem. See, the speed of electron in the first orbit is given as c by 137 and what is the speed of electron in the second Bohr orbit? I would write like this, see, v2 by v1, that is what we want and v2 by v1 as per this equation should be what? v2 you have n1 by n2. Now, n1 is what you have as a first orbit 1 and n2 is they have said is the second orbit you can substitute and you are given v1 as c upon 137. So, from this equation you can say that v2 is 1 by 2 times v1 which is c by 137. So, the correct choice will be a which is 1 by 2 into c upon 137. going to the next problem, a count rate meter is used to measure the activity of a given sample. At one instant, the meter shows 2400 counts per minute. One hour later, the count drops to 300 counts per minute. Then what is the half life of the sample? See, in case of such problem, see if you look at the options, you won't get anything unless you write some equations and get yourself convinced. So, what equation at least we have time here to learn. So, activity means we should recall this A equal to A naught e raised to minus lambda into t. This is the activity of a sample at any instant of time t. So, I will take it as A 1 at t. Then the activity or count rate it after one hour it becomes so much. So, let that activity be A2 and A0 remains same e raised to minus lambda t plus 60. So, hope you understand that and uh, now you know A1 as well as A2. So, A1 equal to what 2400 activity divided by A2 it drops to 300, you would definitely write this equal to e raised to minus lambda t divided by e raised to minus lambda t plus 60. So, being in the denominator, when you bring it to the numerator, it will be plus. So, I will write that step minus lambda t plus lambda into t plus 60. So, once you get this, say lambda minus lambda t plus lambda t gets cancelled plus lambda into 60, that is what you are left with. So, e raised to 60 lambda I will write here and on the left hand side you cancel out this 3 8 is 24. You get 8 and for 8 you can write 2 raised to 3 
and it is e raised to 60 lambda you get. From this you write what is 60 lambda, therefore 60 lambda is equal to log of 2 raised to 3 you are getting and definitely this will be to the base e because 60 lambda equal to log of 2 to the power 3 to the base e. So now you bring this 3 to the left hand side. So once you bring it here, it can be cancelled with this. This becomes 20. 20 equal to log of 2 to the base e and you have lambda here in the denominator. Now you can understand that this is the expression for half-life and without any doubt you can think which is the correct choice. So correct choice is C here. Question. See, the given diagram indicates the energy levels of a certain atom. When the system moves from 2E level to E, a photon of wavelength lambda is emitted. The wavelength of photon emitted during its transition from 4E by 3 level to E. So it means, this is a diagram as you see here. The wavelength of the radiation emitted when the transition takes place from 2E to E is given to be lambda. Then what would be the wavelength if the transition takes place from 4E by 3 to E? That's a question. Options we have lambda by 3, 3 by 4 lambda, 4 by 3 lambda and 3. See, offhand you cannot answer. But if you give little thought, you can arrive at the correct answer. So whenever there is a transition from one level to another level, you all know that a radiation of certain energy is emitted. The wavelength of this radiation emitted is inversely proportional to the NRC. So I recall that lambda is proportional to the difference in energy between the two energy levels between which the transition is taking place. So now making use of this formula, we will write for the two transitions. First wavelength, I'll take it as lambda 1 is proportional to 1 by I should write E2 minus E1 which is 2E minus E and uh, this turns out to be what proportional to 1 by E1. <coughs> I just write like this. Then for the second transition lambda 2 is proportional to you can definitely write this 1 by what is the energy difference 4 by 3 see 4 by 3 E minus E you get. So 4 by 3 minus 1 will be how much? 1 by 3 E. So I would write it as 1 by here, 1 by 3 times E, that's what you get. We are asked to find out what is the wavelength lambda 2. So if you take a ratio of this, see lambda 2 by lambda 1, if I write, what will be the equation? See, this 1 by 3 E, you, will, you can take it as 3 by E and uh, make the changes. Lambda 2 by lambda 1 is lambda 2 is uh, 3 by E and this divided by 1 by E you get. And what's that you find? E gets cancelled. It is 3. So lambda 2 is equal to, I would write, therefore lambda 2 is equal to 3 times lambda 1. So the correct choice is D. So we have the answer here as 3 lambda. In the next problem, a hydrogen atom in the ground state absorbs 12.09 electron volt of energy the change in the orbital angular momentum of the electron is. So when you go through this problem, students, you find it very simple, maybe because the length of the problem is small. Now the options you have here in, first is 1.05, 10 to the power of minus 34, second 2.11, 10 to the power of minus 34, the other one is minus 2.11, 10 to the power of minus 34, and you have 4.22, 10 to the power of minus 34 joules second. This is the change in angular momentum. Now, if you just look at the problem, see, hydrogen atom in the ground state, you have to emphasize that, it absorbs so much of energy. 
then it goes to what state. That is what you need to guess. And then you are, from that information, you should need to find out the change in angular momentum of the electron. So what all we require to know is, see, energy of the electron in the ground state, you know, there is E1 minus 13.6 electron volt. You all know all that. E2, you that minus 3.4, you can write this. Then E3 is equal to minus 1.51 and E4 and minus 0.85 electron volt. Now from this you can guess, see, to get 12.09, which are the two energy levels involved. So on absorbing an energy of 12.09 electron volt, the atom would go to what state, from ground state? See, 13.6 and this 1.51, if you take into consideration, so you will definitely get this minus this will be 12.09 electron volt. So once you guess like this, you will immediately come to know that there on absorbing so much of energy, the transition takes place from what? Ground state to the third one. So what is the value of principal quantum number? Here n equal to 1 and here the principal quantum number value is 3. So if I ask what is the change in the principal quantum number? Change in the value of n is delta n equal to 3 minus 1 is 2. So we got this information. We are asked to find out what is the change in angular momentum. So for this you need to recall the formula. See formula for angular momentum you have written many times mvr which I shall take it as L equal to nh upon 2 pi. This is a formula to be used. Change in angular momentum. So that's what being asked, delta L equal to, so you have to write change in principal quantum number, delta N is 2, H you can write as it is, that is 6.6 .6 into 10 to the power of minus 34 you can take, and uh, here it is 2, and you have pi is 3.14. Now 2 gets cancelled. Now you can guess what could be the answer. See 6.6, 3.14, .6, you will get somewhere around 2 plus something. But important is, See, there are two, one negative, another one is positive. Here, the change in principal quantum number and hence the change in angular momentum is a positive quantity. So, the correct option is B, which is 2.11 into 10 to the power of minus 34 joules second. Students, we have another problem here. The radioactivity of a sample is R1 at a time T1 and R2 at a time T2. If half-life of a radioactive sample is T, then the number of atoms that have disintegrated in time T2 minus T1 is proportional to. See, please emphasize some of the terms here. First point to note here is it is said radioactivity of a sample, which can also be taken as activity of a sample, which is given as R1 at some time T1, then it will be R2 at another time T2. So it is very much similar to the one problem that we have already discussed, but there is still difference. If half-life is given as T, then the number of atoms that have disintegrated that is being asked in the time interval T2 minus T1. So here, you should uh, recall another form of the same equation, activity of a radioactive sample or rate of disintegration of a radioactive element is directly proportional to the number of atoms remaining in the sample. See, you must note that. So, I can write the first equation that is dn by dt is proportional to n and so it is equal to lambda into n. This is what they mean by radioactivity. It is taken as R that is in the problem, radioactivity. So now at a time T1, it is R1. At a time T2, it is R2. So corresponding to these two pieces of information, I can write R1 equal to lambda into N1 and R2 is equal to lambda into N2. Now please note here what N1 and N2 are. N1 is the number of atoms remaining 
are yet to be disintegrated. Similarly, N2 is the number of atoms remaining at time T2. So, what is required is number of atoms disintegrated that is what we want. So, we I will take this equation as see R1 is definitely more than that. So, I need uh, what N2 minus N1 is the number of atoms. N2 is less than N1. So, I will take from this equation N1 equal to R1 by lambda. I can write here and N2 is equal to R2 by lambda. Once you write this, see I would take therefore N1 minus N2 is the number of atoms is disintegrated it becomes and uh, so it is should be equal to R1 minus R2 divided by lambda. So, this is what you get. Please note what is N1 minus N2? N1 minus N2 is the number of atoms disintegrated in the time interval T2 minus T1. Now, again in the question you must emphasize that word they have asked how much that number they have not asked. It is proportional to what and see the options they are all in terms of what R1, T1, R1 minus R2, we have reciprocal R1 minus R2 divided by T and all that. So, here what I do is I will substitute for lambda in terms of half life. So, it becomes R1 minus R2 and uh, this divided by lambda is what 0.693 divided by T recalling the expression for half life. So, once you write this equation come back to this and see n1 minus n2 equal to this. So, this being a constant you can say that the number of atoms disintegrated in the time interval T2 minus T1 is directly proportional to R1 minus R2 into T. So, the correct option is therefore is D R1 minus R2 into T. The next problem, see it is very very simple one provided we understand in detail what is given in the problem. The shortest wavelength in the Lehman series of hydrogen spectrum is given which is 912 angstrom minutes and one more information they have added corresponding to a photon of energy 13.6 electron volt. Then what you are asked to calculate the shortest wavelength in the Balmer series is about see you have given four options the one is 3648 angstrom minutes next 8208 see randomly you cannot choose the correct answer from the information that is given unless you make a bit of calculation. So, while making calculation see you will be having very less time. So, you need not write in detail. All that you need to know here is see what is the meaning of shortest wavelength one important piece of information. Then the expression for the wavelength uh, for Lehman series and Balmer series. So, it means you need to recall the expression for the spectral series of hydrogen atom. For the Lehman series let me write it as 1 by lambda 1 equal to R into 1 by see 1 square for Lehman series and minus 1 by n square I should write, but I bring in the shortest wavelength. So, you need to know for shortest wavelength what is this you should how to put n equal to infinity. So, it is 0 you have to put. So, this is the meaning what you are expected to know. So, for shortest wavelength you should take n equal to infinity. This is for uh, Lehman series 1 by lambda 1 equal to you have left with r. Similarly, we can write uh, the equation for the Balmer series then it becomes very simple 1 by lambda 2 is equal to r into bracket what all you would write again that is the shortest wavelength. For Balmer series it is 1 by 2 square which is 4 and again n is infinity. So, you get r by 4 and you are asked to find out the wavelength of the Balmer series shortest wavelength. So, if you take this divided by this if you divide the first equation by the second lambda 2 will go to the numerator. So, lambda 2 by lambda 1 how you get this 1 by lambda 1 r 
divided by 1 by lambda 2 is r by 4. So, you get 4 here. So, what is lambda 2 then? It is 4 times lambda 1. Now, with the help of this, you can guess. See, lambda 1 is given 9, 1, 2. So, 4, 9, 3, 6 you get. So, once you look at the options, see, it cannot be 8, 2, 0, 8. It cannot be 1, 2, 2, 8. It cannot be 6, 5, 6, 6. So, obviously, the correct choice is A, which is 3, 6, 4, 8 angstrom inners. Students, this uh, is a very simple problem to look at. But uh, in case we are not attentive and we do not have the necessary information, we can definitely arrive at the wrong answer. Let us see what is the problem. The binding energy per nucleon of deuteron 1H2 and helium 2HA4 are 1.1 million electron volt and 7 million electron volt. It is given. The energy released when deuterons fuse to form a helium nucleus is, you are expected to estimate this. Now, the point here is the trick binding energy per nucleon, meaning you should know, which means the binding energy per nucleon, you can say. So, binding energy divided by mass number is what you get binding energy per nucleon of deuterium is given, that is 1 is 2. From that, you should cal calculate what is the binding energy. But before that, I will just write how the equation runs. See, what you are expected to no is 1 H2 plus 1 H2 will go to form helium nucleus. This is the reaction when they fuse. So, you can just estimate binding energy per nucleon of uh, deuteron is uh, how much? 1.1. Therefore, what is the binding energy of the deuteron nucleus you should take? And that is not 1.1, 2 times 1.1. So, this is 2.2 into 1.1. Plus, similarly, you have 2 into 1.1. So, how much it turns out to be? It is 2.2 uh, plus 2.2, it will be 4.4. Now, the helium nucleus, see, the product nucleus formed has binding energy per nucleon as 7 million electron volt. So, what is its binding energy you must estimate? It is mass number is uh, 7, sorry 4 and binding energy per nucleon is 7. So, you would get it as 28 million electron volt. This is the energy of the product nucleus formed and the energy, binding energy of the reactant nuclei is 4.4. And the energy released is the difference between the two. 28 minus 4.4 will be what? You can guess, see that it cannot be 2.2 it cannot be 28, you can go on selecting this and then it cannot be 30 and you are left with 23.6. So, the correct choice is 23.6. One word of caution, see when we get this, we will be tempted to subtract that 4.4 from 28 and see that whether we get the correct answer or not. Instead of spending time like this, if you just adopt this method, you just go through the options and one which is very close to that, you can think that that is the correct choice. See, what is the problem? The ratio of the largest to shortest wavelength in the Bomber series of hydrogen atom. It is definitely very simple. We, we have just discussed uh, how to find out the shortest wavelength. What is the meaning of that? Now, we have another term here, the largest wavelength. You should be aware of all these terms. To get shortest wavelength, we substituted n equal to infinity, you remember. Now, to find the longest or the largest wavelength, what do we do then? So, you have to take the minimum number. So, let us see. In view of this, this problem is selected. So, for Balmer series, we would write the equation for a wavelength spectral series 1 by lambda is equal to r into bracket 
So you have first number for Balmer series, it is 2 square, which is 4 fixed. Now for longest wavelength, so I would say here it is longest wavelength 1. Longest wavelength means n should be chosen to be equal to the first number. After 2, it is 3. So it is 1 by 3 square, which is 9. So the ratio of the largest to short, largest to shortest wavelength. Similarly, we can write for the shortest wavelength. So I'll write here shortest wavelength, which I take it as lambda 2. So because it is for the same spectral series, I have to write the same equation. So 1 by 4 remains. And you will re definitely remember that uh, for shortest wavelength, n should be equal to infinity. So this is 1 by infinity, you would get it as 0. So it is nothing but r by 4 you get. And what this gives you, see 4, 9 minus 4 is 5. So you would write r into, which is 5 by 36. You can take this. Now, with little thinking, you are asked to find out the ratio of largest to shortest. That order you should keep in mind means longest to shortest. So what you do is divide the second equation, that is 1 by lambda 2, which is shortest, divided by 1 by lambda 1, which is longest. So this gives you lambda 1 by lambda 2. I think I am right. So this will go to the numerator. So you will get longest to shortest wavelength ratio it is equal to. So 1 by lambda 2 you would write r by 4 here and that one is r into 5 by 36. So this definitely give you, so 36 will brought to the numerator. So it is a 4, 9 36, 9 by 5 you will get the answer. So once you get this you can see which is the correct choice. So the correct choice is C which is 9 by 5.